and welcome back to my channel. My name is Holly and I'm so excited today to go over some Montessori inspired springtime activities for toddlers. I have a one year old and a three year old and we are so excited for spring and all of the fun activities that come along with it. And I'm excited to just go over some activities with you guys. And they are all Montessori aligned and things that you can do with your kids really easily on a budget for free, different things like that. None of these are actual like toys that I bought. I either made it or it's something that you can go and do outside. A lot of these activities are gonna be outside because that is where the magic is happening, right? It's all changing and everything outside. So I highly encourage spending some time outside. So being outside brings me to my first activity and that is to go on a child-led walk. I talked about this in a video a while back, but I have been loving going on child-led walks. So this is when you let the child kind of dictate what you guys do on the walk, where you go, different things like that. Um, and then if you explain to your child that you guys are going to use a magnifying glass or binoculars, and as you go on the walk, you can stop and look at things, you can look around at you know, the cracks in the ground, or if you find a bug, you can look at the bug. If you find a bird's nest, you can use these and look at the birds, uh, whatever you can see and find in your area. Or um, if you want to do less of a child-led walk and go more into nature and just take your time to really point out some of the different things that are going on in the springtime, you know, like little baby animals, the blooms and blossoms and different things like that. So I highly recommend having both the magnifying glass and binoculars on your walk. And that way you can really see some new things and see things from different perspectives too. Next is to plant something. So this can be so simple. You can just go and get any sort of seeds that you can find. You can even use like a head of a pineapple that you cut off or the avocado pit, you know, like different things like that. There's so many things you can like look it up on Google, ways that you can plant. Um, or you can just, yeah, go to the store and buy some seeds and plant a plant and let your toddler see how it grows over a span of time. So it definitely is gonna be like a longer thing, right? They're gonna have to be patient. You can teach them about watering the plant and making sure that it is theirs and like they can take care of it and different things like that and they are gonna love it. We actually did this with my son a little while back for Valentine's Day and he thought it was so much fun to look at the plants and see how they grew every day and he also was very interested in watering them. We did have a little bit of mishap where we forgot about them for a few days and they died. So when you are planting plants, Plants, you gotta remember that there are so little and so they are going to die really easily but it is fun to take on and even though they died it was also like a learning experience there right because we had to teach him that they didn't get enough water and so you know they couldn't come back to life but I always think it's a lot of fun to teach kids about planting and if you have a garden that is even better right they can spend some time outside and actually plant some vegetables and hopefully be able to eat them that would be awesome Next, we have an egg hunt. So Easter egg hunts, I feel like are so common and everything like that, but it's something that you can do a lot and kids love it. They love to play find and seek. So you can, I have these little eggs, but you can really hide whatever you want and have your kids find whatever and they will love it. They think it's so much fun to hide something and find it. You can do different activities this way, hot and cold, or you can play music as they get closer, you know, you do it louder or softer as they get further away. There's so many things that you can teach and do in like a find it, seek it game. And I think it is so much fun and something that should be done a lot more often instead of just like once a year during Easter. It is tons of fun and your kids are really going to love finding and hiding different things and doing different adaptations of the game. Next is something I'm really excited about doing with my son and that is flower arrangements. So this is going to be tons of fun. I don't have flowers with me right now, but if you go to the store or if you go outside and everything is blooming, it is like a still a little early I feel like for spring right now where we are, but if you can find some flowers and you can go out and pick them with your toddler and you can then bring them in and put them in a vase, fill it up with water and let them arrange the flowers in the vase, it is tons of fun. This is a very classic Montessori activity because it helps children have a visual eye. It is so much fun to go out and find flowers and then be able to snip them, you know, and be able to put them in the vase and everything like that. Your toddler will really love doing this activity with you and you'll end up with beautiful flowers that you can set out for you guys to look at. The next activity is doing life cycle charts. So this is so fun and really easy. I found this printout of different stages of butterflies. Um, and I can link down below where I got it. It was for free. I think like the first one you get is for free. So if you find something else you like on the website, you kind of have to pick and choose. 
but this is a butterfly printout and then I just got this paper plate and drew some arrows on it. Super simple. There's like lots of really cute things you can buy like on Etsy or online if you want to go that route too. But then you can just have your toddler learn about the different cycles of different animals. So this one, like I said, was a butterfly um, and you just put the egg and you can start it up here. You can have them glue it on the plate or just place it there. And then it goes on and you like go through and put on all the different pieces like that. And it goes through obviously everything. So this is so easy to do and it's like, you know, a paper plate and I just like drew lines on it. Um, something that I think is lots of fun is you can find books to go along with it. So we would probably read this book during the activity. Um, everyone knows the hungry caterpillar and then learn about the life cycle of the caterpillar through these. And then you can print out a ton of different pictures. If you want to, you could do like frog or chicken, different things like that. And my toddler had a ton of fun doing this activity and I'm sure you guys as well too. Next is a um, find motor skills activity. So this, I just cut out some pictures of a tulip um, and then you can give your toddler scissors, whatever scissors that they are able to work with and move, maneuver. They can then just use these lines and cut here and that way they make tulips. So you can then color them in or do whatever you would like with these. You can use some glue and glue them onto some cardstock and make flowers, make a little bouquet looking thing. But this way they can work on those fine motor skills and their scissor skills all in one and make a beautiful bouquet that they can give to someone or they can hang up in their art space. Next is to make Play-Doh. I don't know why I think of Play-Doh in the springtime, but doing different activities with Play-Doh is so much fun. We made Play-Doh very recently and my kids loved it. Uh, the Play-Doh I made was taste safe and I switched out the salt for some flour and some cornstarch. And I feel like it turned out so well and my kids love to play with it, make sure to keep it in the fridge. We left it out and it did get like pretty sticky. We also live in a very humid area. So Play-Doh is tons of fun. You can make all sorts of things. You can make flowers, you can make animals, you can make different ways to reenact spring or just let your kids play with it and entertain themselves. And the next activity I have is to go and visit a farm. A working farm would be so much fun for the kids. We love to go to different farms, local farms nearby, where they can learn about strawberry picking, where the strawberries actually come from. They can learn about sunflowers. We have both of those nearby, a sunflower farm. You can also go to a farm that has animals. They can learn about eggs and chickens there. They can learn about goats, cows, different things like that. And if you can go during the spring, it's extra great because they oftentimes have babies running around and you can teach them more about baby animals, different things like that. You can match the baby animals to the adult parent and there's so many different ways and things that kids can learn if they go and visit a farm and do like a fun little field trip and it gets you out during the day which I personally really love because I feel like I do need to get out of the house otherwise I get all cooped up restless the kids get restless it's just not good you know Okay you guys, and my very last activity for you is leaf rubbing. So it's so easy to go outside and get some leaves. I just got these from a tree. So for leaf rubbing, you just take these and put them underneath a piece of paper and then put it on a hard surface and color on the top of it. And you'll be able to see the shape of the leaf on the piece of paper. This is a super fun activity, but probably a little bit for older kids so that they can really color. But if your younger kid is like able to scribble, I mean, even that, if you're holding the paper for them, they'll be able to figure it out and make it work. Um, and if they are a little bit too young, what I like to do too, is you can take your leaf and you can put some paint on it and they can do paint stamps. So they, you just paint the leaf, um, which I feel like most toddlers will be able to do. And then you can put them on the paper and make little leaf stamps with your paper and paint, which is tons of fun. And that's it for all these activities, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are excited about springtime and teaching your kids all about the animals and blossoms and blooms and the things that happen during spring. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe so that you can watch my other videos that are very similar. I love to share Montessori activities that will teach our children, but also are so much fun for them and they will love to do over and over. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.